Welcome back. So tonight's game really wasn't about the game, was it? Uh, this is one of those unusual cases. Now, uh, the funny thing is that, you know, there's an Abbotsford game currently going into overtime. I would totally have gone to that game, but I knew I couldn't miss this tonight. And management's really, really got some work cut out for them. So the game itself, let us go ahead and discuss. Uh, and then we can get into other stuff while the game's going through here. Uh, so it's Georgia versus Delia. Uh, it's Hockey Talks Night on the same day as Bruce Boudreaux had been moved to tears uh, by questions from reporters. Uh, the, the Rick Rippon uh, tribute stuff is fantastic. Uh, definitely, if you're having any kind of struggles, make sure you reach out. People care. If you think they don't, they do. If you think they won't miss you, they will. And that is absolutely 100% the truth. But it, it's just, it just feels like while they're kicking their coach off the team, just not officially, now they're going to have a little talk about, well, you know, for depression and all that. I'm, I'm sure for Boudreaux this is tough. This might be his last job in the NHL. So um, skate jerseys were being used again tonight, uh, being used properly. Uh, they were used in losses quite frequently when they had the skate jersey before. So uh, it, it kind of feels to me like Ottawa going back to their original jerseys. They lost a lot wearing those too. So I know there's the nostalgia, but when I see them, I think, yeah, those lost a lot. So early save by Georgiev, but then there's a press by the Avs on a turnover by Mikheyev. Both goalies were sharp early. Lazar has a rush chance that's defended. Miller tips in a goal, but it's waved off immediately for a high stick. It wasn't close. It was definitely a high stick. Uh, extra points for creativity, though, for Miller on that one. Um, Rodriguez loses the handle in close. Kuzmenko's denied. The abs cleared out. Uh, O'Connor's denied. The rebound cleared. McKinnon has a shot kicked aside. Uh, Bear has a shot that's held as the Canucks press. Canucks get a power play. Uh, OEL fires one wide. It's killed off. The abs then rush afterwards. The shots are 7-5 to five for Vancouver at the half. And then at 11.32, Cogliano opens the scoring from New Hook. And it was on a turnover, wired top corner. So not much chance for Dealey on that one. Kuzmenko then has a net drive that's defended. Miller can't bury one in close. Near miss for McKinnon in close as well. Uh, Rodriguez has a near miss as the abs press. Notice how many chances were really in close today. Both defenses giving up some chances here. Uh, Newhook has a shot that saved the Avs with some momentum. Besser has one that saved Canucks would press, but with 1.10 left, Besser puts the puck over the glass. Therefore, it's a delay of game, and uh, the Avs get a power play. Then with 1.6 seconds left, it becomes a 5-on-3. So that's to start the second period. Remember, the Canucks penalty kill is at, at the lowest in the league, and it is flirting with the worst penalty killing in the history of the National Hockey League since they started tracking it. So there's 50 seconds left in the five on three for the abs to start the second period. Of course, they score on it at 34 seconds. It's Nachushkin from Confer and McKinnon. I will also agree with Shorthouse and Garrett on this. Uh, it is nice to see a five on three where a team's shooting the puck rather than pass looking for the perfect goal. Uh, that's why five on threes stymie some teams because they don't shoot the puck. They just wait for that perfect shot. McKinnon fires one high in an open net shortly thereafter, so it was almost 3 0. Canucks finish the kill for the 5 on 4. Uh, pressed by the Canucks at 4 minutes. There's a post for Garland. Then the Canucks get a power play. Garland drew that as well. Aggressive penalty kill, a couple of missed passes by the Canucks. Uh, Miller has a rush chance. That's caught. Things get punchy on a hold by Georgiev. That power play is killed off. Shots are 5 3. Vancouver at 7 minutes. The Avs press at 8 minutes. Garland couldn't get to a rebound as Georgiev ends up clearing the puck before he could get there. Avs get another power play. Shorthanded chance for Lazar. That's blocked out. Strong shorthanded board play by Lockwood during that as well. Uh, then we get 40 seconds of five on three for too many men on the ice. So just it's one of those things. And again, for the Canucks, it's just been a disaster. McKinnon has a shot that's held. And then during the five on three, yet again, Colorado makes it three nothing. Uh, this time it's Rantanen from McKinnon and Rodriguez at 10.32. He banks that win in off Delia. Uh, so there you go. There's a near miss for Nachushkin. Because remember, they're still in the power play. Five on four. Shorthanded rush for Horvat. That chance was saved. Uh, Canucks kill the five on four. So the Avs two for four in the game. And that was the end of the power plays for them. Uh, Canucks uh, killed that off. And then at 12.32, so two minutes after it became 3 nothing. Pedersen, forehand, backhand, and bury it. Uh, from Besser and Kuzmenko. And after that goal went in, the Bruce, there it is, chant went up. Uh, they showed Bruce Boudreaux. He put his hand over his heart. 
could see him get kind of choked up. He swore under his breath. He always said he didn't like the Bruce There It Is chance. And and I, I always thought, you know, he's probably just saying that. And I would say that's that's a good example. Or maybe in this instance, with what's gone on, he appreciates them a little more than he did before. So, um, the Canucks press with three minutes left. McKinnon has a blast that saved as the Avs press late. And then in 1927, Hunt scores for Colorado to make it 4-1 to from Rantanen. And it was a knuckler top corner from the point. Uh, just one of those ones that just kind of cruises into the net. So we're going to the third period with a score of 4-1. to Lots of early whistles in that third period. Cogliano takes his third penalty of the game. So uh, they talked about how he's usually a really dangerous penalty killer or has been against the Canucks. Well, it can't be a dangerous penalty killer if he's the one taking the penalties. Uh, Kuzmenko has a shot that's saved and close. Dries hits the post. That's killed off. Shots are 4-1 to one for Vancouver, four and a half minutes into the third period. Uh, Avs are happy to dump it in, change, and uh, and repeat. And this is kind of what they were doing. They were just doing their best to, to kill the clock. Uh, Garland has a backhand chance. That deflects out. Avs press at eight and a half minutes. O'Connor has a shot that's saved. The Canucks clear it out. Horvat then with a rush chance. That was saved. Pedersen with a wraparound chance. Saved as well. Georgiev very sound in net tonight. With 8.28 left, the Canucks get a power play. There was a shorthanded 2-on-1 that was broken up by Quinn Hughes. Uh, Horvat can't bury one in close. That power play's killed off just the one chance during that power play uh, for the the the, uh, the Vancouver Canucks. 2.45 left. Bruce, there it is, chance. Now, why would that be key? Well, the Canucks are down 4-1. to one. That's normally a chant that was reserved for when they were ahead, when they just scored. Uh, the fans really showing their support for Bruce Boudreaux. He is a very popular coach with this team. Uh, usually at the time that a coach gets fired from Pat Quinn to AV to whoever, when somebody gets fired and they're out of Vancouver, usually they've hit their expiration date and fans are okay with it. I, I don't feel that with Bruce. I think the fans understand that, yes, this team has a lot of problems. Bruce is not the problem. There's a lot of problems in how this team's made up, right? Um, so... Uh, there was a post for Joshua. The Canucks would press, and in the final minute, there's another Bruce. There it is, chant. Uh, when the game ended, Bruce was gone. He was straight down the hallway. Uh, he will likely be the coach tomorrow night for his last game in Vancouver. And then odds are, from what everybody's saying, that Sunday morning we'll get word that Rick Tockett's the new coach of the Canucks. Uh, he, he will be as popular as Mike Keenan was when he took over. That's my prediction. Uh, when Mike Keenan came into Vancouver, uh, that was that was a, a, a move that uh, wasn't very well received. The difference is the Canucks fixed that. They, they got Brian Burke and they fixed it relatively quickly. Um, yeah, so tonight's game, 4-1 to one for Colorado. Lost in all of this and overshadowed with everything dealing with the Canucks right now is that the Avalanche are now tied with the Calgary Flames for that second wildcard spot and they've played fewer games. So Calgary has a game tomorrow at home against Tampa, and suddenly they're below the playoff line. So the Canucks drop to 18-24-3. Tank watches on, and I, I read a, a, a Thomas Drance article today on how Canucks, you know, aren't going to tank. They're not going to lose that much. Oh, I have faith this team can lose a lot. I don't care who their opposition is. So Colorado outshoots Vancouver 14-10 in the first, 10-8 in the second, and Vancouver outshoots them 11-6 in the third. Final shots, 30-29 to 29 for Colorado. Power plays, and this is really what sinks Vancouver. 2-4 for four for Colorado. Uh, Vancouver 0-4. Oh for four. So special teams cost them again. I feel like it's a it's a broken record. Hits 24-10 to 10 Vancouver. Georgiev saves 28 out of 29. Continues a remarkable season for him. And Delia 26 saves on 30 shots. So tomorrow night it's Edmonton. We'll see what happens then. Let me know your thoughts in the comment section below as always. Don't forget to hit like and subscribe if you're browsing your way through. You just happened upon this video. Um, I, I can't remember the last time that I seen a, a, a coach of the Canucks almost cry twice in the same day. It's, uh, it's quite the accomplishment. It's a low bar. So I've always argued with fans, this isn't the worst era I've lived through worse. That's changed. Thank you guys so much for watching me throughout this worst era. And hey, uh, Avs, you're back in, in the playoffs. So if you're an Avs fan, let me know how excited you are right now. The four wins in a row and all that. Don't forget to hit like and subscribe if you're browsing your way through. You just happened upon this video. And hey, thank you guys so much for watching, for all your support. I will talk to you again soon.